Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to do another collaboration beer. So this one is half Dutch, half Swedish. The Dutch side comes from Bodegraven in the Netherlands, Brauerij de Molen. You might recognise the particular style of artwork on this one. And the Swedish half is Omnipoyo, who are from Stockholm over here in Sweden. So this one is the Cetus, uh, which is an Imperial Pineapple IPA at 8.5%. And it should be quite interesting. It's not one of the more highly rated beers that either of these breweries have put out. It had a 3.4, I believe, on Untapped, and uh, I think it was a 71 that it had on rate beer overall. So we know that both breweries have produced beers that are rated better than this, but both breweries are very, very strong, and they won't exactly put out a bad beer. So, as I always say, go into the beer with an open mind and see how it turns out. Don't just always go for whale beers, because that makes things boring, of course. But um, I'm interested to try this one, and I hope you guys enjoy my particular take on this beer. So, yeah, I think this is the first beer I've actually had where it's been exclusively pineapple that they've added to it as well. So, should be an interesting one. I need to check out Pineapple Sculpin, of course, as well. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries. If you want to get straight to the tasting, of course, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, it's the link to my other Reviews I've done from Omnipoyo and my other reviews involving Brow Ride Mon. Like I said, I still need to do a dedicated review to these guys. I've just never got round to that or found one of the beers that I really wanted to try from them. And uh, there's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Dutch beer reviews and for all the Swedish beer reviews before that I've done for you. They are constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brauerei de Molen first off then. So de Molen is a small craft brewery, distillery and restaurant that's located in Bodegraven in the Netherlands. So de Molen translates into English as the mill, hence the mill brewery and it's located in a historic windmill called de Artwief which was built back in the year 1650. I do believe they have another bigger production facility as well these days, but De Molen itself was founded back in 2004 by Neno Olivier, who started, as, who started experimenting as a home brewer and then turned professional and founded his own company. And it's probably fair to say that Brauerei De Molen are one of the most recognisable Dutch craft breweries. There really is some great stuff coming out of the Netherlands these days. I've had very, very positive experiences with Dutch craft beer and there's a number of breweries. The number of the breweries, of course, are is always on the rise, and of course you wouldn't expect anything less. They're right next to Belgium and Germany, which have some really good uh, beer history, and of course I guess that's kind of rubbed off on them as well, and they do their own things as well, which is, is awesome. So in some ways it has its advantages, but I guess when you have those two big beasts next to you, it can maybe hit... Uh, hinder your beer getting out there a little bit, which was the case for quite a number of years with Dutch beer in my experience. But we are starting to see more and more of them getting out into different countries, which is a very positive thing in my mind. So yeah, if you haven't tried any of the Brauerei de Molen beers, I highly recommend that you do. So on to Omnipoyo then. So Omnipoyo was founded back in 2011 by Henrik Venti, who was a long-time home brewer, and Carl Grandin, who is a clothing designer. So the name of the brewery is derived from omnipotent chicken, so Omnipoyo. Poyo, of course, Spanish for chicken. And these guys are gypsy brewers, so they have no kind of brewery of their own. They brew a whole, a whole variety of different institutions, I think. They brew a lot of their beers at Dugas down at Gothenburg. They also brew a number at uh, Buxton in Derbyshire, England, and there's a few of their bigger batch beers, of course, are brewed at the Profbrauer in the Christe Hefte near uh, Ghent in Belgium. So they use a whole different, a lot of different facilities, and of course, they've got different partnerships with different breweries as well. But the main thing to take away is that as a result, they brew many different collaboration beers, as you can see with this one from Brauerei de Molen. But their home base as such is Omnipoyo's Hat, which is in Stockholm. That's a pizza and beer bar. It was done as a collaboration with Pizza Hat, who are, have got a very good reputation in the city from I hear, but that's a kind of must do if you go up to Stockholm. Hopefully, I can visit that when I finally get up to visit there sometime. But two very strong breweries involved in this one. Omnipoyo, of course, are particularly famous for these big, kind of cakey flavoured imperial stouts and things that they're doing, as well as that ice cream series of beers. Um, but both breweries do some really interesting things, and it is cool to try one of their collaboration beers. So, yeah, that's all you need to know about both of the breweries just now. We'll get on into the tasting section of the video. All the links, like I said, are in the description below. So as I said, this one's an 8.5% Imperial Pineapple IPA. 
the, uh, the hops in this one are Zeus, Citra, Columbus, and they've got another late another dry hopping of Citra in this one. They've added cornflakes, pineapple, and it's a top fermenting yeast strain that they've used in this one. So yeah, I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork again. Of course, this is the style of artwork that you'd associate more with Brow Ride de Molen than Omnipoil, and you can see there is the Brow Ride de Molen bottle cap on this one. I do like that. That's actually the first bottle cap that I'm getting from uh, Brow Ride de Molen. I do need to try and review the, the Rasputin or something from these guys. I want to get one of their really good beers to do as my, uh, as my first one from them. But yeah, nicely presented this one. Of course, the key difference between this and the others is that normally the Brow Ride de Molen ones are uh, white and black rather than bright colours like this. But we'll get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. So yeah. Nice smoky opening on this one. The other thing I should say about this beer, other than that you can smell the pineapple as you open it up, the other thing I should say about this beer is that it was one of the small partiers here in Sweden through Sistian Balaga. I believe it was the, uh, the 5th of April that this one was released. So yeah, and this one of course is best before the 16th of March 2018. So yeah, should be a really interesting one. But as you can see, and as you would kind of expect from an IPA, it's poured a nice kind of bright uh, yellow colour, this one. I think it's fair to describe that as an almost, not quite a lemony yellow, it's not, it's a bit darker than that, but a sort of orangey, yellowy colour, this one. I think that's a really nice beer. If I had put it up in front of the light, it definitely comes across as more of a yellow. It just, it looks like, you know, pineapple juice or something like that, like a tropical fruit juice. There's a solid half finger of a frothy white head on this one. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see the beer itself is quite opaque. There's a lot of that pineapple just coming off the beer, this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. But yeah, let's have a look. That's all you need to look at the aroma, uh, at the, the appearance of the beer rather. Let's have a closer look at the aroma then. It actually smells pretty nice. It's not as pungent as some of the as some of the other beers that I've come across involving uh, De Molen or the ones from Omnipoyo, of course. But yeah, there's a lot that you can smell the pineapple just kind of underpinning this one. When it's a pineapple IPA, dude, that's what you'd expect. But you can pick up a little bit of mango an almost peachy apricot sort of thing. There is more of a complexity to the fruit than simply pineapple in this one. It's fair to say that. You can smell definitely, there's a bready malt base to this, some biscuit, maybe a little bit of a richer caramel I'd say. And there's almost a kind of herbal note coming out of this one. I always remember with the Zeus hop, I think I commented on that before, it has this kind of almost peppery and herbal thing and you can pick up a little bit of that in the aroma of this beer. Of course, the mangoes and stuff, the mangoes and the kind of peachy apricot sort of notes of this, they'll be coming from the citra. And the Columbus gives you a nice kind of, it gives you a, as well a sort of nice kind of floral aromaticity. You can detect a lot of these floral and grassy elements to the beer, but the, um, yeah, the aroma of it really is fruity. It's the pineapple that's kind of underpinning it. Then you get some of these sharper, more oily, fruity characters that are coming out from the citra hop. But it's got a nice, it has got a nice malty base to it as well. The bready and kind of biscuity notes are coming out of this one really nicely. There is a, a good sweetness in that. But as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you actually try it. That's always half the experience when it comes to craft beer. But it does smell really quite nice. It's not the most pungent of aroma that I've come across from beers involving either of these two breweries. But it's just got a nice kind of easy going sort of thing. So without further ado then, let's try this one. So this one is the Cetus, a collaboration from Brauerei de Molen in Bode Graven in the Netherlands and Omnipoyo, one of the gypsy breweries from here in Sweden. Skar, Bruce I should say as well. Mmm. This one. Mmm. It's nowhere near as bitter as I was expecting. Yeah, it says on the side here, if I'm understanding that right, it doesn't actually say the IBUs on this beer, which is kind of unusual. This one really is more, this one comes across right away as pretty much a session beer. It's really obvious from the start. Yeah, there's not a lot of bitterness to this one at all. You could easily just kind of tan this beer at 8.5% it 
it's ridiculously drinkable. There's a wee tiny little bit of boozy warmth down here, but really very little in the way of that. It's a very, very easy going beer. You do get a little bit of booziness just in the aftertaste and a little bit of the warmth, like I said but you could so easily just gulp this down, it's really easy drinking. So, it's, it's just, it's really unusual, I mean, around the edge of my tongue I'm getting some of these nice pineapple bits and then, as I always say, the main fruity characters from the hoppy oils, they'll come out on that little curve behind the very front of your tongue, you can feel just a little bit of uh, grapefruit, I guess, which will be from the Columbus kind of underpinning the beer. As I always say as well, shoogle the beer around your palate and let the whole mouth adjust. But yeah, it's really interesting that one. It's quite a refreshing beer, but I guess it, would you, that would be the question. Would you really want an 8.5% beer to be considered refreshing? You wouldn't want to tan that. It would mess your day up in a very, very nice way, I have to admit. But would you really... An 8.5% beer maybe should have a little bit more uh, it should have a little bit more warning about that in it. This is ridiculously easy drinking. You expect this from this kind of easy drinking from an imperial stout. That's probably a good way to sum that up. This is a double IPA that is as easy drinking as some of these imperial stouts that you're going to come across. But yeah, let's look at the flavour a little bit more closely. So you've got this kind of bready malt base that just blankets the middle of the tongue. On top of that, you'll get a little bit of a, it's almost a slightly thicker, doughier bread. It's probably more pale malt that's underpinning the beer, and then the thicker, bready characters are in the middle of the tongue. I'm getting a little bit of a biscuity sweetness. There's almost a little bit of grainy character in there too. There's not the richer caramel that I was picking up in uh, the main part of the aroma. Yeah, but the hops in this one, there's really not a lot of hoppy bitterness to this one at all, and it's the pineapple that's kind of suppressing that. As I always say, you can tell when there's been fruit added to a beer because it really affects the mouthfeel. You feel the juiciness around the very edge of your tongue, which is normally where you get that nice kind of hoppy bitterness. As the flavour progresses into the aftertaste, you can feel the bitterness just starting to push its way out. So, in the back corners of the palate, there's a teeny, teeny little bit of earthiness there, but mainly you can feel underneath there's this sort of a slightly spicy floral aromaticity just trying to push its way out. It becomes a little bit herbal, I think, as the beer progresses as well. Around the very front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit grassy. You can just feel that kind of pineapple juice infused in with the sort of grassy and floral flavour. So it's really interesting in that regard. I've not quite come across a beer that's, uh, that's quite like this one before. And you will feel when you actually take it in, there is a little bit of bitterness there. It mellows out and becomes a little bit wetter, and then it just stays like that, and then you start to feel that slightly hoppier character, the hoppy bitterness pushing its way out a little bit later on. But it's, it's really interesting, this one. It's really unusual compared to other things that I've come across. I have had a number of uh, beers that I've had fruits added to them. I mean, Toil Garden of Eden is the first one that springs to mind. And it had a completely different mouthfeel to this one. It was a little, it was a lot more sharp and tart, right enough. And this seems to be a big thing, of course. Grapefruit Sculpin from Ballast Point is kind of one of the classic fruit edition beers, I guess. The grapefruit one. I think that's one of Peter over at. Uh, I'm sure Peter over at the Clueless Drinker in Germany would love that one. Um, but this one to me is it's really interesting and unusual. Because, as I say, I've never had a beer that they've simply added pineapple to. It turns out quite nicely. The only thing I would say about this one is, it's at 8.5%, you do expect there to be a little bit more warning of that, whereas it comes across as really more sensitive. I mean, you would expect this level of, of smooth drinking from, uh, from some of these Imperial Stouts that Omnipoi would do. I'm not sure if it works quite as well in, uh, in the double IP as it does in the stout right enough, but on its own it is a nice beer, just be aware that it's ridiculously easy drinking, that's the main thing. But yeah, I do, I do have to admit, I certainly wouldn't turn it down again, but if given the choice of some of the other Omnipoyo ones like Nebuchadnezzar, or uh, say Fata Morgana as well. I don't think it would quite top those. As for the other IPAs that you get from Brow Red and Molin, I'm not sure. Um, I've not tried those yet, so I can't really comment on that. So it's a nice enough beer on its own, but it's not quite as good as some of the other things that I've had from Omnipoyo. I would think it's fair to say that one. 
I think probably um, the pineapple maybe isn't quite strong enough a fruit to kind of hold this beer down in that way. I would, if you'd gone with grapefruit or, uh, or passion fruit or something like that with that slightly stronger and almost darker flavour that matches the hot bitterness a little bit better, I think this one uh, it would have maybe turned out a little bit better. But it's a good beer on its own, don't get me wrong on this. It's, it's a solid enough beer, it's nice enough, but it's just not... It's just not quite as good as some of the other ones I've had from these guys before. But I would, I would drink it again if it was on tap and the and with given the choice, obviously relative to the choice of other things, I would consider it. You know, it's good enough and it's it's a nice kind of easy drinking beer. But it, for eight point five percent, it is kind of ridiculously drinkable. Mm. But yeah, there's a good bit of complexity to the fruit of this one. As I said, those fruity esters come out and that little oily bubble behind the front of the tongue, you can feel a little tiny bit of grapefruit just underpinning this one. For me, there's a good bit of juicy mango in there and you can feel this slightly peachy, apricotty flavour as well. And that really does mix quite well with the um, the pineapple, the sort of pineapple things in there too. The sort of pineapple flavour around the edge of the tongue. So overall, like I said, it is a nice beer, but I'm not sure it tops the other ones that you can get from both of these breweries. But if you enjoy pineapple flavours, I think this one probably really will hit the spot for you. And at 8.5%, it's a ridiculously easy drinking one. It's like tro tropical fruit juice, to be quite frank with you. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would say it's probably mid-bodied. It's got a big oily mouthfeel, this one. The carbonation is really, really soft on this. There's a little bit of hoppy bitterness to the beer, but not too much. A wee bit of malty sweetness as well. You can detect a little bit of dryness from some of the grainy characters and the malt base as well, but really the malt base is kind of quite sweet but quite smooth and uh, there's quite a good bit of fruity juicy character to this one and the, the hoppy bitterness, the IBUs do increase a little bit as uh, as you get used to the beer. My only, as I say, my only thing about this one is I'm not sure pineapple works quite as well as say grapefruit in a beer or passion fruit or things like this. It probably has to be combined with other things. I, I just I've got a very strong flavour palette right enough, but I just think pineapple perhaps doesn't have the, a strong enough flavour to kind of go up against some of these hops, but it is a nice beer. If you enjoy pineapples, I'm sure you really will quite enjoy this one, but this one, it doesn't top like Fata Magana or uh, Nebuchadnezzar for me, or the, the Neon as well is another really good one, but if you like pineapples, I'm sure you will enjoy this one. I really need to try some of the IPAs and uh, double IPAs and stuff from Browery de Molen in the future. Of course, I really want to try the Rasputin beer, the Imperial Stout as well. I've heard that's awesome, but um, it's been cool to try a collaboration between these two breweries. And it's a ridiculously easy drinking beer. You could sit and enjoy a couple of these in the sun, and that's probably a really nice kind of uh, a nice way to do it. It's almost like a kind of cocktail beer, this one, which makes it quite interesting. So in that regard, it is quite unique, but I'm not sure it tops the other beers you can get from these breweries. But it's been really cool to review it for you here on the channel, and it has been my first beer that they've simply added pineapple to rather than a whole blend of fruits. So yeah, it'd be really cool to try this one for you. So this one was the Cetus uh, collaboration beer between Brauerei de Moen from Bode Graven in the Netherlands and Omnipoyo from Stockholm here in Sweden. A really quite interesting one, ridiculously drinkable for its ABV, a big juice bomb basically, um, but a really interesting beer and I'm glad that I got to try it for you on the channel. So if you have tried this one for yourself, please let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below and uh, let me know your favourite beers from de Moen. I do need to make sure that I review more of their beers sometime soon, but thank you once again for watching. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff and I will catch you very soon with both more Omnipoyo your reviews and hopefully I can do some more demolin ones for you very very soon as well. Until the next time it's landed just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Cheers.